In the days of slavery, most of the time, people were working in the fields on a crop that you can't eat. What are we talking about? Cotton, cotton fields. Working in the cotton fields, one of the ways to make your day go by faster was to sing a song. And a tradition developed, a tradition that some said <coughs> came from Africa and was carried on and adapted into the English language because, of course, slaves weren't allowed to use their own language. They weren't allowed to play music. They could sing in the fields, and that was okay. So let's go back to before the Civil War, because the, slavery was abolished after the Civil War in the United States, 1865. Before that, slavery went on for hundreds of years. More years that slavery existed in the United States than there have been years since then. So it's hard for us to imagine this, but you th think about the history of this continent since you know set settlement from Europeans. And slavery has been here more than it's not been here. So working out in the fields, if you're gathering the cotton, say it's, it's September, and we're picking the cotton, we're loading up the wagons, and uh, the trailers are pulling the cotton along, something's pulling this, if we're talking in the, in the 1850s, let's say, for example. And to the sound of a horse or the donkey, or most often used was a mule, to the rhythm, people would sing about what they had on their mind. And the way it goes is one person sings out something and everybody else sings it back to that person. And waits for that first person to finish that idea. I don't want no cornbread, peas, and black molasses. And everybody across the field would sell by. Don't want no cornbread, peas, and black molasses. finish their idea. As of the time now, oh Lord, 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 as of the time. Next person would sing about whatever they had on their mind. I got a letter, a letter from my mama this morning. And everybody would call back. I got a letter. Rhythm 
echoed on through the guitars like this. And the same sort of tradition is carried on. If I had my June, July, and August, if I had my June, July, and August, then I'd come home, oh Lord, 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 I'd come home, but I ain't got shotgun shacks and on into the clubs and nightclubs. Decades. Really blues turned into that, what we just had there, the 12 bar blues by the late 1800s. Before that, field haulers were unique from plantation to plantation. It wasn't like people were given a chance to go and have a vacation somewhere else and see how the Joneses live. You, you stayed one place, tradition started, and they stayed in that one place. So often, believe it or not, the most common, often uh, the, you know, one of the most common uh, cycles was not a 12 bar cycle, but a 13 and a half bar cycle. You've got to remember that this is because European standards of how to, how to measure and quantify music were being imposed upon African traditions. African traditions that, that worked in phrases, not in bars and measures and quarter notes. And they, you know, it was, it was about when the phrase is done, the next phrase starts. It wasn't about turning it into bars and measures. But it eventually did and got to be a standard form. That song, for instance, was from the 1920s. That song was written in the 1920s in Mississippi. <coughs> and what's particularly sad about that song is that that song was written on a chain gang. That was song was written because since 1917, Mississippi had put forth a law against loitering. Loitering meaning having no money in your pocket when you're walking down the street. And the penalty for having no money in your pocket while you're walking down the street was a $50 fine. <coughs> no irony in that. 